Hi there, welcome to Nippy Invest. In this video, I want to discuss a company called Max7 Technologies. So in the healthcare sector, they do provide data management solutions. Now they are a very, I will say, they have a lot of moving parts, a very dynamic company. Uh, they have been acquisition hungry in the past. Now I haven't been paying close attention to Max7 over the past, say, six months or so, because even though I was a shareholder of this company for quite a few years, I did sell out thinking I was being very clever, selling out for a profit, and then subsequently I just saw the share price keep on rising. So sometimes impatience can be your worst enemy, and sometimes you should just ignore that saying, you can never go broke taking profits, and I think let your winners run really applied in this case. I should have let my shareholding in this company run as far as possible. So even though I did sell out of Max7 a little bit too early, I don't begrudge them any success. In fact, when I look at their Appendix 4C, which they released on April the 12th, it impressed me substantially. So in this video, I'm going to look at their Appendix 4C and talk about why it did impress me. So let's get into the first slide, which is looking at some facts and background in regards to Max7. Max7 Technologies has one of the, my favorite actually ticker codes on the ASX, M7T, I don't know why, but I think it's just the inclusion of a number there in between two letters. Market cap 310 million. And one of the reasons I did sell out of Max7 was I had the opinion that the valuation of the company was getting a bit frothy for their revenue and the fact that at that point in time they weren't really operational cash flow positive. And there was another reason, and I'll talk about that reason in a few slides. When you look at their price to sales ratio, 18 does seem a bit high, but keep in mind a lot of companies at this point or this stage of the business cycle can be quite high when it comes to the price sales ratio. For example, Amazon uh, had a price sales ratio of 40 at one point, and then it dropped to 1.8 by 2003. So even though that seems high, and one of the reasons I did set out was the valuation, uh, this company is starting to show signs of justifying that valuation. I'll talk about that in the next slide. Straight to the important stuff for Max7, straight to the cash flows from operating activities. This is the first thing I always look for in the appendix for C, and I'm searching or looking at two numbers in particular. The first number is receipts from customers. Sometimes it is good to know uh, what the previous quarters did provide when it comes to receipts. So when I saw 3.4 million, I was almost blown away because that was significantly higher than what we've seen in the past from this company. And what also blew me away was right at the bottom there, operational cash flow positive by 3.3 million. So that was very impressive. And in fact, they increased their cash on hand by almost $4 million for the quarter. So a very impressive quarter for Max7. And if they can continue this sort of uh, quarterly cash flow moving forward for the rest of the year, the valuation of 310 could be justified. But in saying all that, you can't look at the receipts number in isolation. It's good to know what sort of trend we have for the company. And when you look at the receipts history for Max7, you can see there is a general upwards trend without a doubt when you look at this. But the receipts is quite lumpy. In fact, one of the most lumpy receipts history I've seen on the ASX. I do prefer a smooth uptrend and not this lumpiness. But I can't really begrudge uh, Max7 because we still do have an uptrend. When you go back to July 15, when we did have the first Appendix 4C4, uh, this company, Max7, they only had $80,000 in receipts and they've grown that to $8.4 million. So this company has really grown over the last six years or so. In fact, when you look at or calculate the compound quarterly growth rate, it's running at 22% per quarter. Quarter. Now I've taken away those first four quarters because they're quite low and just want to see what the growth rate is from the July 2016 when it was 2.2 million. So even if you take away those first four quarters, they're still growing their uh, receipts at 7% per quarter. Now because they are quite lumpy, I wanted to see the trend and then calculate the trend growth rate and that's running at 4.6%. But still that's impressive for a quarter, now that's almost uh, about 18% per annum. And that's the sort of numbers you do want to see when it comes to receipts because eventually you can equate that to revenue. And 18% growth in revenue is quite impressive for any company. 
I'm going to finish looking at actually three charts for MAC7. Uh, go to the three year weekly chart, hone in on the, I think it's the one year daily chart, and then really zoom in on the, about a three month daily charts just to see what's happened, you know, how the market responded to this uh, Appendix 4C. So going back three years, we can see the share price was going sideways at about 20 cents for quite a while until around April 2019 when they hit an inflection point and that was the catalyst to send the share price upwards and onwards and the share price has gone from 20 cents to a high of just shy of $1.60 at the start of this year. So that was the catalyst around then. You can see the massive increase in volume as well. So you've got the increasing share price corresponding to increase in volume. And that's a real good catalyst and a trigger for a potential re-rating in a share price of any company. The only dip in the share price during this period or the uptrend we've seen subsequent from that catalyst or start of the re-rating was during the COVID-19 financial panic. But that was just a temporary blip on the upwards trend in the share price of MAX7. So a very impressive chart when you look at this over the past three years. The next chart I want to show you is a little bit of a zoomed in, just looking at the past one year, although in fact this is a little bit more than one year because I just wanted to show you uh, the COVID-19 financial panic around March 23 when the share price got to just below 40 cents, so an ideal time to buy into Max 7 at that point. In fact, it would have been the ideal time to buy into any ASX company at that point in time. So I hope you did buy some companies uh, towards the end of March in 2020. So a very well-defined uptrend since then, and we can draw an uptrend on the chart here. So at this point in time, and a reason why you would not sell out of MAX7 is because the share price is above the uptrend, and the only reason you might want to sell out is if the share price fell through the uptrend. That would be the sell signal at this point in time. So in the next chart, I just want to show you the market response to their Appendix 4C, and I think there could be a developing uptrend over the past few days. The next chart I want to show you is just a zoomed in version of the last three months because you can see what's happening during the last few weeks, which is very important for me. Now the share price did get to a high of just short of $1.60 towards the end of January, but just like all tech stocks, we did see Max 7s share price pull off um, during the late February, early March period as the whole tech sector did sell down as bond yields rapidly rose. So the share price of Max 7 got as low as just about $1.15 or so, and we have seen the share price rally since then. Hasn't been any significant volume during that rally, which would have filled me with slight wariness. But when they released their Appendix 4C on April 12, we did get some buy signals. So the share price rose 9% on that day, but more importantly, we did see it, it rise on significant volume. So volume is very important when it comes to these setups. You want to see a larger volume than the preceding days, and we definitely saw that. In fact, that was the largest volume day for about a month and a half. So this is a potential buy-in for those people who actually like this company. And even though I did sell a um, little bit early for Max 7, this could be a potential buy even for me. That's all I've got for this video of Max 7. And something I didn't mention in the previous uh, slide is a problem a lot of investors have when they sell out of a company, in particular when the share price has risen from when they sell, and that is buying back in at a higher price. And I am going through that right now with Max 7. And even though I do have a buy signal, um, I am going through that psychological barrier of buying into the company I've already sold out of. So if you want to leave any comments in regards to that or in regards to Max 7, maybe you disagree with me that this Appendix 4C is impressive. Maybe you thought it was dismal. And if you do think it was dismal, can you leave a comment and explain why? That's all for this video. And I'm not a financial advisor. So if you do need to seek financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who's qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's all. Have a good day. Bye.